Amen. Amen. All right, now, you know, as I mentioned, uh, our, our lesson this morning is going to cover something that, that, as I mentioned earlier, we all found, find ourselves in this effect. Okay, imagine this. Jesus Christ is going to leave. They've been with Jesus Christ all this long time. Now Jesus Christ is going to disappear. Now, and this is a scripture you hear all the time in funerals. If you open up your Bible and look at verse 1 in John 14, and they all, they, this scripture is read. It says, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Now, Jesus Christ, when he was telling them now, because they, Jesus finna leave, and every one of the disciples is sad. They trouble because they don't want to hear that talk Jesus talking about, I'm finna depart. No, no, Jesus, we, we want you here as long as we alive. But Jesus said he noticed their hearts was troubled. And sometimes when you lose something that's, that you know that's been your pillar all your life, the time, or the times that Jesus had been in Christ was, had been with them, they knew that they weren't going to have that intimacy with him and see him and touch him and eat with him. Them, that made them sad. And Jesus Christ told them, he said, they, had, they were troubled. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. He said, because he wanted to let them know that even though you might not see me physically, I'm still with you. How often we find ourselves in troubled times. He said, if you believe in God, you believe also in me. He said, I haven't left y'all. He was just trying to, get, he was trying to get them to understand, even though you won't see me physically, I'm still there with you. That's John chapter 14, the very, very first verse. And that's, that scripture is also used today. Like I mentioned, you know, we hear it in funerals and we hear it in, on other occasions because what is trying to get individuals to see, even though you've lost something or lost a loved one or uh, you, you seem to be separated from Jesus Christ. He said, don't, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. Because what you're going through right now is only temporary. That's what he was trying to get them to see. What you, what, it's pain. And as God's people, we have to understand we're going to find moments in our life where we're going to go through pain. We're going to find moments in our life where we're going to be hurt, where we, where we can't make it, where we almost want to give up. And Jesus Christ knew that time was coming for them. He said, and, and he was trying to give them comfort. This is where that next verse come in. You know, we hear this scripture all the time. He said, he was trying to give them comfort and let them know, look, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. That's verse two. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself. So he was just letting them know, look, I'm separated from you, but it's just going to be a little while. Where I'm going, I'm going to get the things in order so that when you do die, I have everything already set for you. But so, but that still had them feeling sad. Even though Jesus Christ promised them that, hey, I'm going to get things in order for you. I'm going to get things set up for you. He was letting us know that we as God's people, we're going to find moments when we get discouraged, we're going to get sad, and, and we're going to feel like everything around us is crumbling. And that, and that world was crumbling because, see, Jesus Christ, uh, he was a, their leader. And imagine your leader disappearing from you physically where you don't see him eye to eye like, as they did before. So what he was trying to get them to see that, look, where I'm, I'm going somewhere, even though I'm going to go through these troubled times, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He said, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. So he was letting them know and reassuring them that once you go through these trials and tribulation, it's only temporary. Now, it's going to be rough when you're going through it. And it's not going to be easy at all. It's going to be, it's going to be a, almost seem like you just want to give up. That's, that, they was in that situation because you notice when Jesus Christ started going through his trials and tribulations, I mean, some of them ran, some of them was got in, in a depressed state, but Jesus Christ was trying to reassure them, and he reassured them again when he was resurrected. He was just trying to reassure them, even though you don't see me physically, I'm still here with you. Go ahead, go ahead. 
Yes, sir. Exactly, and that's what, that, yep, that's in the, yep, that comforter. That's in our lesson for the day. Yes, exactly right. So they, they were, they felt like, I, I don't understand, Jesus. You've been with us all this time. Why are you leaving now? But the picture was bigger. If Jesus left and did not uh, prepare a place for us, then we wouldn't have nowhere to go. So it was really more, more about us than those 12. Because if he had to stay with the 12 and stayed on this ground and stayed and didn't go on the cross, none of us have been here. There would have been no salvation. So it, it was really, I understand them being sad, but it's kind of a little bit selfish because I know they want to keep Jesus with them. But if Jesus Christ had of stayed with the 12 disciples, none of us have been going to heaven. None of us would have made it to heaven. So Jesus Christ had to tell him, look. And then Thomas said to him, he said, Lord, I don't know where you're going. How, how do I get there? Jesus said, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life in verse five and six. He said, no one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus Christ was just trying to prepare them. He was preparing them for his absence. He was trying to reassure them. And that's why our lesson Today, the, the, the theme is how Jesus, the part of Jesus is giving them peace. And see, that's one thing about, that's why God's people, when they have Jesus Christ, man, you, you'd be like, how did you go through what you went through? Man, I don't understand what you went through. Because when you look at some of the things that God's people go through, physically, we shouldn't have been able to make it through that. You shouldn't have been able to make it. I mean, people who have lost their children, people who have had, had, had murders in their home, people who have been killed in car wrecks, family members. You, you, it's, if you haven't been in that type of situation, you, could just only, you can't hardly imagine what it's like to lose a child in a car wreck or a child die of sickness. But then, but then you see them making it through another day. How do you lose something as important as, a, as your baby or lose something important as just your job or your life or some, a family member life and still make it each and every day? That's what Jesus is trying to console them and let them know I'm going to be gone from you. I need you all to understand that, that, that all these good times we're having now, all these great times we're having eating, sleeping and drinking and, uh, and, 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 showing, and, and sharing the word with one another, that time is going to end. And, we, and we're going to get in that situation where we're going to be in a, in a part in our, in our life where everything is going to be going good. It's going to be going smooth. We're gonna, I mean, you're going to be like, thank God. And then that big old hiccup is going to come. And then something bad is going to happen. Or we're going to go through some trouble. Some, and go ahead, Sister Nadine. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, you have something like you said, that good. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Protection. They were protected. Yes, they were. All that, and they knew what was happening because all this time there were the Pharisees that were still cutting up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, they were Jesus. They were secure. Exactly. Exactly. And that's something. See, they like the sister Nadine said. They not only lost a uh, companion. Jesus was a true friend. They could tell Jesus some stuff and then nobody else know about it. <laughs> Jesus, they, and Jesus, un, Jesus knew their background. And see, like today, Sister Nathan said, he was a true friend. He was like, I'm, I'm with you from, Jesus said, I give, he did. He gave his life up for them. And they, and they knew that Pharisees, like Sister Nathan said, the Pharisees, they, they were ready to cut you in any minute. They were, the Pharisees, they would put those laws on you and they didn't care nothing about you personally. So for them to lose Jesus Christ, they lost the best friend they ever had. Nobody else was gonna be like Jesus Christ because he knew all their, go ahead, this thing. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I thought you had your hand up. <laughs> they, they, everyone knew, they, everyone, Jesus Christ knew everything that they went through. He knew their background, he knew their faults, he knew what they was thinking, he knew what it was in their heart, but he didn't tell nobody. He didn't tell nobody about Judas until the end. But Judas was with him for all that long time. Not one time did Jesus say, oh, look, but, but the, he was here three and a half years. Jesus Christ waited till the end to tell them that Judas was a traitor. 
He could have set him out a long time ago. When he first saw him, he could have told him, man, that joke ain't no good right there. And they, could, they would have took care of him, but he didn't. He waited till the very end when he was about to die to let him know that somebody's gonna betray me. He knew Peter had a temper. He, he knew it from the very beginning. He knew Peter had a bad attitude. He knew Peter don't, don't mind cutting off some ear, but not one time, if you notice at the beginning of it, he tell him, now this joker right here got a bad temper. He can't talk to him, you know, he won't hardly listen, but Jesus Christ kept that all to himself. So they losing all that. And now when Jesus Christ goes, they left all, they seem like they left all by themselves. That's why where we at today in our lesson, Jesus Christ left. And now we heard, we heard this saying whole, a lot. If you think about it, it's, it's true, but it's not true. You know, they say that G Jesus Christ is all you need. Jesus Christ is all you need. But Jesus Christ said, when I go away, I'm going to send a what? Comforter. So you not only need Jesus, you need the Holy Spirit. So you need both of them. Because when Jesus Christ left them, they felt, all, they felt like, wait a minute, I can't see him. I can't talk to him. I, I mean, I can talk to him, but I can't touch him. So Jesus Christ said, this is where our lesson start. This is exactly where our lesson start today, where he's talking about a comforter. Let's, let's take a look at that, that text. That's verse 15. That's, hey, that's it. That's it. There you go. Help me out there. Help me out there. All right. Look at verse 15. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's the first thing he said. And I will pray for, for and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. So you got to have, not only Jesus Christ, you got to have the Holy Spirit. And they all work as one. Because he said, if you love me, keep my commandments then. And one of the, what are those two most important commandments of everything? Yes. You got to love the Father, with all your heart and all your soul, and then love who else? Neighbor as yourself. He said, if you love me, in other words, if you love me, you're gonna have to love one another. He said, that's the only way I'm gonna accept you. He, and he was trying to get them disciples to know now, they know when, they, when they, uh, he left them, you know, he wanted them to understand that it ain't no big old eyes and no big old U's. Y'all all are supposed to be doing this one, same thing, disciple maker. So ain't no big uh, Matthew and a little bit of John, ain't no big Mark and a, and a little bit of Luke. He said, y'all all on the same level. And he was telling them, he said, look, he said, I'm going to say, I know I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm going to give you a comforter. Now, what does the comforter do? The comforter or the Holy Spirit was designed to bring back to memory everything Jesus Christ taught them. Everything that they learned with Jesus Christ that's what the Holy Ghost said. I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost don't do. The Holy Ghost don't give you nothing that you ain't already put in yourself. If you haven't studied God's word, the Holy Ghost ain't going to put no miracle special words in your mind and you're going to come up and be an awesome learner and teacher of God's word. You got to put something in you for the Holy Ghost to put, some, put it out of you. So look, look, I'm going to read it for, to you. I'm going to read it myself. I'm going to read it to you myself. It says... In the next verse, he said, well, that same verse, he said, it, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you, in you. So then they know him. How do you get to know Jesus Christ? You got to study him. See, the Holy Spirit only brings out what you already put in you. It said, you know how you say it, the Holy Spirit brings it back to your remembrance? It's only bringing it back what you done put in. So if you don't study God's word, the Holy Spirit ain't going to do no miracle and put, that, and put all the information in your head. It's going to recall what you've already studied. So in other words, if you don't study putting them in, ain't nothing going to work. Exactly right. Exactly right. Remember. That's it. That's it. That's it. 
The Bible, that's why, that's a good point. That's why the Bible said the Holy Spirit is a helper. In other words, it ain't gonna do the, do the work for you. It's gonna help you once you put it in. So we got the, and everybody's at different levels for God's word, the Bible. Now the Bible ain't telling you everybody here to be a scholar. And everybody go in here gonna know every, nothing, everything about God's word, the Bible. Even the people that stand up here don't know everything about God's word, the Bible. But what you do know and what you study, that Holy Spirit will bring that stuff. You, I promise you, in another year from now, what we've learned here in Bible study, you're going to be somewhere talking to somebody and they're going to ask you a question. You're going to say, we already talked about that in Sunday school. And the Bible says so-and-so about that. And you're like, man, I remember that. It's because it, it bring, go ahead, sister. Go ahead. Oh, okay. And so it's bringing back what you got. It's not going to bring anything that you, you haven't studied or learned. It's going to, I promise you, it's going to bring, and you're going to sit there and go, wow, how did I remember that? Because it brings back what you've already put into you. That's why it's called a helper. It's not a disabler. A disabler means I'm going to do all the work for you. But the helper is, I'm going, what you already got, don't worry about it. If you forget it, I'm going to bring it back to your memory. Sister Ingram. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you swear? <laughs> you so tell the truth. That's what I call fillers. Because they, they have, I ain't got no more words to give you, so I'm going to fill in with some words. You see what I'm saying? So, and there's nothing wrong with that, but when you teach something, I, when I leave out of there, I should be able to learn something. You know, I could, if I, the Bible said last week, Jesus cried out, but when he cried out, he was teaching you something. So if I hoop for 30 minutes and you ain't learn nothing, all I did, all I got is a, a, a bad voice strain. That's all I gave you. Now you done left here. So next week when you're going through something, all you remember is, all I said was, ain't God good. Won't he do it? He said he would, won't he do it? So that's all I got. I done hooped for 30 minutes and I ain't gave you nothing. So now when a trial and tribulation come up, but Bible said last week that Jesus cried out when he was teaching. In other words, now when Jesus hooped, he told you something. When you left out of Jesus' place, you got some message, you got something in you. Now when troubles come up, you can say, no, look, 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 look. I've already studied that. And God's word said, look, if you do this, like we just said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if somebody come to you and say, well, look, uh, sister so-and-so, or brother so-and-so, do I have to love so-and-so? Do I have to love my enemies? Then you automatically tell them, yeah. Jesus Christ said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. And we know what them two major commandments are. You got to love them. You got to love them. And that, oh God, I got you, Bruce. That includes everybody. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, how dark you are, how uh, short you are, how tall you are, and it includes everybody. Everybody is, everybody is, you got to love them. Now, he loved Peter, he loved all of the other the apostles, they all had their issues now. They all had some issues going on. So he didn't agree with what they did, he didn't agree with Peter chopping that man's ears off, but he still loved him. See, you don't have to uh, agree with what somebody's doing if they're going against God's word of the Bible, but you gotta love them though. Because if I don't love them, how am I gonna talk to them? If somebody's known for robbing a bank and you know they are robbing banks, love will tell me, look, I ain't gonna rob no bank with you, but I'm gonna tell you what Jesus Christ said. If you, you can't be stealing. So now you ain't agreeing with him. You just told him what Jesus said. Go ahead, Bruce. Do what that book? Leading. Obedient. Obedient to the word. Okay, good. I mean, don't look at those good read words. Mm-hmm. If you don't take it, live for life, be obedient to it. That's it. That was the devil, and that was the stipulation of love that you would, you would know his word, his commandment, and you would be obedient to his commandment. Yes, it. That's it. You don't love me. Exactly. Good, Bruce.
Exactly. It says, it, it, Bruce said it. If you love me, keep. I right, keep means obedient. I mean, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, Lord. Now we're gonna fall. We're gonna fall, we're gonna fall, we're gonna fall. We're gonna make mistakes. But understand this, Jesus Christ, understand that. Because he 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 walked around with 12 uh imperfect people who had issues of their own. But what he's trying to say is that even on, on this narrow road we're going on, you know, like as I mentioned, we're gonna fall, but we 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 are we are progressing. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're not going the other way. We're progressing, each one of us. That's why he said, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. And so in other words, as you're going in your progress, he said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit to help you. And said, I want you to understand, we, we, everybody put all kind of uh, stipulations on the Holy, Holy Ghost. Say, they said, the Holy Ghost is always going to be the Holy Ghost. I've heard this say the Holy Ghost got degrees. Sometimes they say, well, man, we had church today. Woo, the church was on fire. The Holy Ghost was there. Man, Holy Ghost is going to be there as soon as you come in the door. Why you put so many degrees on the Holy Ghost? Oh, man, did you see that? We was on fire. So then, in other words, you telling me the Holy Ghost is bipolar. So one day the Holy Ghost feel good, it's gonna put you on fire. And then one day the Holy Ghost don't feel good, it's gonna be down low. The Holy Ghost is a helper. It's gonna lift you up 24 seven. Now, sometimes they get enthusiasm mixed up with the Holy Ghost. Because I could worship God right where I'm at. Give him praise right where I'm at, okay? And you good. Then, then I could be over here Lifting my hands up and give God praise, and you good. See, Holy Spirit don't stipulate how you worship God. Everyone in here is different. I might say, thank you, Jesus. Mm, you did it. Grandmama used to do that, remember? Thank you, Jesus. Mm, you did it for me, Lord. You did it for me, Lord. Now, somebody over here, up here, by I got you, Sister Nathan. Hold on, don't, don't you forget it now, because I got you. Somebody over here may stand up and say, praise him, praise God. He's still blessing both of them. He's still, and then somebody else may sit in the middle and rock. Mm. He did it for me, y'all, he did it for me. Mm. He's still gonna praise that person right there. So when I start stipulating how she prays, how she prays, and how she prays, now, I'm now uh, the, per the overseer of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling the Holy Ghost where to go. I did you go over there because she's doing a little bit better than she is right here. We don't have that right. We don't. Go ahead, Sister Nadine. This is just my opinion. Mm-hmm. But now, I'm going to say, because I can say a lot of us grew up in church. Yes. And then, but it's truly, when you really, like you said, accept Christ. Mm-hmm. So, and that's probably years later you've grown, maybe you know you're another kid. Mm-hmm. But all this time, I've never heard how to be taught on, or really, about what the Holy Spirit, what he does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's got to be on the inside. Yes, it does. So, mm -hmm. we see uh, in the church, when people that's supposed to have the Holy Spirit within them, and then they hurt other people, mm -hmm. and then they, one minute they happy, because we based on, well, emotion. It's trying to say it, but just not talking about the Holy Spirit. It goes to what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. We know it don't put, uh, hey, be in an unclean temple. Yes, true. You can't live a raggedy life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what I'm saying is, if, if you taught on it, and people see this, get the really knowledge of how the Holy Spirit feels, but you talk about how the biggest disciples, they weren't converted yet. Right. They said they were trouble. Mm -hmm. They were trouble because he was leaving. Mm -hmm. But he took, when they found out later, after he went to the cross, they were then do it with power from on high, which the Holy Spirit come in there. And remember in the room up there, when Thomas touched all of them, Mm. So they had power in mm -hmm. going out witnessing yep. the city. Mm -hmm. But then when I say this here, when I see that when we talk church and make people feel bad, but you just ain't got the spirit in you, you just, you know, mm -hmm. when it's converted, you just just go in there and just mm -hmm. hang out. I need you to clap your hands, I need you to pray, mm -hmm. I need you to do all that. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. What does the Holy Spirit, why don't you explain to me what he does? Uh, who? I mean, I'm good. That's a good sister. Mm-hmm. You know, because we pick and choose how we're going to glorify. Yeah. You can't glorify unless the Holy Spirit inside. Exactly. And see, that's good, Sister Nadine. And see, sometimes they think that you've got to generate the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, the Holy you, it don't. It, 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 yeah, exactly. You, you, I got to generate it. You know, I got to get it started over here. Then I got to get it started over here. Exactly. He don't need you. Yeah, exactly right. First Corinthians chapter 13. Here, here is the fruitages of the Holy Spirit. Now, if they don't have these right here, because this is, what, this is what comes with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, you know, we don't heard this scripture a hundred times. He said, the fruitage of the Spirit is, the whole book of verse Corinthians 13, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and self-control. Now, I don't care, I don't care what, if you could, if you could lit, raise this up, I don't care what you got going on, what powers you got going on. If you don't have these fruitages of the, of the Holy Spirit, something missing. Because the Bible says with the Holy Spirit comes love. Read that when you get a chance. First Corinthians chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13. That is the fruitages of the Holy Spirit. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and I love God. It should not take anyone to prompt and uh, yes, time exactly right. to jump and praise God. Exactly. Yeah, it exactly. It's a commandment yes. to praise God. Exactly, so exactly. If you love God and I have got you. those I got you, of the Spirit, mm-hmm. then when you come to church, honestly and truly, it should not, the Holy Spirit within you mm-hmm. should automatically move yeah. Exactly. Because it is a commandment mm-hmm. to those things. So when you kind of talk about, no, it don't sometimes, no, it don't take all that. Everybody mm-hmm. prays and worship differently. Exactly, exactly. So I may cry this Sunday, I may run this Sunday. Mm-hmm. So it depends on the, the spirit and how it moves within me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I can't shun so and so and so and so because all I should do is sit over there and rock. Right, exactly. Exactly, exactly. That's what we were saying. Exactly. So I'm like, sometimes, Nadine, I see, you know, what you see is someone trying to tell you, you don't have the Holy Ghost. You don't have the Holy Spirit unless you do these five things. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Just, if I don't ever speak in tongues, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. I know God, I'm saved, and I know the Holy Spirit lives within me. Exactly. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I can tell if the Holy Spirit lives in you mm-hmm. or me mm-hmm. on how I treat my name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. And it's because the Holy Spirit, the main purpose of it is, one of it is love. It's love. Brother Bruce? Well, the Holy Spirit actually is to lead you to Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Exactly. And bring you bring it back to your knowledge. Exactly. It does. It, exactly. Exactly. And it, it's good. Good point. Okay. I got you. I got you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's why we have babes in Christ. We have those who, uh, so it's, it, everybody's on different levels. That, that makes no one no less. It's just to mean other people that, you know, have studied more, but that don't make them any less. So that's why we got spiritual babes, but the individuals on milk, and then we got people on solid food. When the Bible says that, there are people who have just, uh, uh, began, just began to study his word. And so we're all on different levels. We're all on different levels. Sister, Sister Kate? Yes, this man, Holy Spirit and, con and conduct goes together. It's God that determines that. It, hold, the Holy Spirit has, like I mentioned earlier, the fruits of the Spirit, which, uh, uh, which is, is the Holy Spirit, you, you, could, uh, you could readily see. Because there's fruits of the flesh, which is the opposite of the Spirit. Now, when, you, when I say the fruits of the Spirit, you got to have love, because that's part of it. If you don't, you, uh, that's number one in that. If you notice, that was the first one it mentioned, was love. Now you know how often that you now how often you hear this right here. I'm preaching better than y'all are responding. <laughs> so then, what I'm trying to do now? You, you, I'm trying to pump you up, but your your praise is automatic. And how you praise is you. So it, this this is, ain't no this ain't no track meet. I need for y'all to catch up with me. Why I'm, why I'm praising, I don't see y'all jumping. If I'm jumping, I want to see you jump. If I clap, I want to see you clap. So next thing we doing, we doing calisthenics. You see what I'm saying? So now I got a whole bunch of people jumping around and then I said, hold, stop. Why are you praising? Because you jumping. I'm jumping because you jumping. So now, so now we at the gym and still at church. Our praise in the Holy Spirit, every, like I mentioned, everyone in here, that's why Jesus Christ's house has many people of different backgrounds, different cultures. The Bible says, he said, I saw a great crowd of people from all backgrounds, all nationalities. We all are uh, different levels of come to God's house and, and studying his word. But the, but the problem, but the, but the task of each one of us, we gotta start. And everyone on, on this road, everyone, like I said, mentioned, is different. Every one of us is different. Okay, I can't, that mask at me. <laughs> no, see, that, see that, that's where the issue is right there. That's where the issue is right there. Because every one of us in here, as I mentioned earlier, nobody in here knows everything. I promise you, man, I promise you. I wish you could see the books I got just to study. Because you know why? Because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. When I come up here and I'm reading, you, you say, oh man, he know that lesson because I started that lesson Monday when I left here Sunday. <laughs> because I didn't know. And, then, and, and I promise you, when you guys are talking and telling me, it's a lot of stuff I don't, I'm, I'm like, that's a good point. I didn't even realize it like that. You, t you teach, go ahead, Sister Ingram, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're going to know the Spirit mm -hmm. by the Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Sister Christmas can get, get, get happy over there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, before you know it, that Spirit does, if you got the Holy Spirit now, that Spirit does touch everybody got that Holy Spirit. It mm -hmm. may go all over this church. Mm -hmm. It's because of her. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to know the Spirit. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. So, so Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter, it's all in one. Neither one of them is going to say anything against the other. Jesus Christ, the Father, the Holy Ghost, they're all one. We, we teach that all the time. So whatever one agrees with, they're all going to follow. We are, they're all going to be one. And we and what is really teaching us, what Jesus Christ was teaching them, how important as God's people to be as one. Because he was departing now, he's finna leave. He said, I need y'all to be on the same accord here. Because you won't be able to see with me every day as you normally did, eat lunch with me, dinner with me, watch me do these miracles visually. He said, But I so I'm, I want y'all to be on the same accord, be as one. That's why he said, 
uh, keep my commandments. Follow my commandments. He said, you, if you do that, you're going to be good. He said, I got you. You're going to be all right. It, it may be a rough road, but I, I got you. I'm going to say, yes. Okay, okay. I'll be watching hands. I'll be thinking everybody. Okay. So, so let's go on down to our next, our next verse, which is 30. He says, I will no longer talk much with you, for the rule of the world is coming, and he has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandments, so do I. Arise and let us go from there. Now, who is this rule of this world that's coming? He was talking about Satan the devil. He knew Satan was coming after him, and he was coming with who? Judas Iscariot. At this point, right, at this very particular time, Judas, he's, he's a, arriving with the army uh, to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. The loving others, sinning, all calm came around Jesus Christ. But the Bible says he has nothing on me. He was letting them know that I'm going to defeat this. You're going to see the devil show up. He's going to try to kill me. He's going to try to kill. He's going to try to kill y'all. He said, but he, I got control of him. And that's what he trying to get us in, in, uh, to be knowing and being confident in ourselves that no matter what the devil put upon us, Jesus Christ said, I'm still there with you. And, and it's going to be rough. That's why we got to let people know that when they come into Jesus Christ, that's when your trouble starts. Because the devil's not concerned about what he already got. He's really concerned about what he done lost and what Jesus Christ done saved. So those are the targets. As soon as you accept Jesus Christ, that's when, you, that's when the target comes in. And Jesus Christ is trying to say, he's letting you know, he said, look, now he's going he's gonna, he's gonna to work on you. Because if they did it to me, they got to do it to you. He worked on me, he, they worked on me, so you're going to go through some trials. So folks going to lie on you. And folks, going, they're, going, they're going to talk bad about you. Some people are going to hate you. So they, they're going to treat you terribly. He said, but hold on. I, Jesus said, I got this. He said, the devil ain't got nothing on me. I like that part right there. The Bible, he, ha, he has nothing in me. He said, I, hey, I got control of this devil. So you just do what I tell you, I take care of him. But we have to understand we're all going to face it. We're all going to face it. There's no miracle that's going to keep none of us from going through troubles and trouble in this time that we live in. Every one of us is going to do it. And my problem may not be your problem, but I promise you, you got one. <laughs> you got one. And you might not never tell nobody. You may not, you may not ever tell nobody, but I promise you, 100% in this room right here, you got a, tr you got a problem. And it may, it may not be a big one, but you got, you got a problem you're dealing with. Because Jesus Christ said, he, if he did it to him, it's, it's going to happen to you. So to solve that problem, we as God people, we got to keep Jesus Christ as our focus in our life. We got to have an intimate relationship with him. They had it. So that, that bond that they, the, that they had with Jesus Christ, they got to understand something. He wanted us to get that same bond with him. He, 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 he's not showing no favoritism. He ain't showing no partiality to do you. If you come to him, he said, I got you. I'm going to accept you. No matter what, what garbage you had before you, whatever type of issues you had before you, just come on with me. I got you. I'm going to make. So what he was trying to get them to see and let us see that the Holy Spirit is still active today. And we, in, in, in order for us to allow that, we know we got to be individuals humble for one thing. We got to be individuals who can, who can accept God and accept the changes he tell us in our life. Because sometimes it's hard. It's, it's hard sometimes to accept that. But humility has to be the focal point for, in order for the Holy Spirit to enter. Because everything that we mention about it, you have to be humble to accept it. Jesus Christ said, I want you to go love sister so-and-so, love brother so-and-so, but you know he get on my nerve. You know brother sister so-and-so, you know they lied on me, so and sister so-and-so did this to me. But Jesus Christ said, if you humble yourself, just go on over there. Just go on over there. If they, even don't, if they don't accept you, you just go on over there. He said, if you done done what you're going to do, now go, on, go on, now go on to your next one. That's part of the Holy Spirit. It's a helper. It ain't a disabler. It's, it's yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. 
You do it. That's it. Go on, get, done do your, get your bags, go to Walmart, go shopping. You done done all you could do. Yeah, that's all you could do. And pray for them. I tried to do my best I can. I told them how sorry I was. They didn't accept it. They said, give them some time to get over that. Okay, all right. You, now you go and pray for them. I'm going to tell you what prayer does for, for your enemy. It, it, it helps you. It, it puts you in a different set of mind when you can pray for somebody who still can't forgive you. I said, Lord, now what you've done now, you have humbled yourself. That said, Lord, please work with them. I, I try to do the best I can and, and, and let them know how sorry I am. But they haven't accepted it as yet. But Lord, I pray that they could ch their hearts will change one day. All that does is help you, I promise you. It does, it helps you a whole lot. Because I, because I've said before, they are going on and you over here suffering, worrying about it. But once you shake that thing off and you done done all the Jesus, you done followed the steps of Jesus Christ, first one is to go to them and go to them alone and try to work that thing out. And if they don't want to hear it, I ain't going to talk about it. Come back to me next year. We'll talk about it then. You leave it alone. And that's a hard task. That's a hard task. Because as God's people, I mean, we, we are some abused people. <laughs> people treat us bad because they say, well, they, they, they misconstrue being humble as weak. So they try to run over God's people. You see what I'm saying? It, Jesus Christ was humble, but he wasn't no pushover. And see, and, and people use that, oh, well, he's a follower of Jesus Christ. I talk to him any kind of way. I treat him any kind of way. I say what I want to say to him. But that, that, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. And so as God's people, we, as we go through those things and we've done all we can do, then let that, th let that thing go. Let it go. You done done all you can do. And I promise you, it's going to either work on that person's conscience, they're going to come back and say, man, they're going to really hit them and say, okay, you continue to pray for me. You continue to work for me. Even though I had this bad attitude and you said you were sorry, it, it, it'll convict them. It, we hope it does. We, we hope it convict them to move them and come back towards your way. Exactly. But if they don't, man, I hope they, I hope they do it before Jesus Christ returns. That's what we pray. Man, please, I hope they, I hope they get this together before he comes back. Because it's, that's a bad place to be. The Bible says, if you love me, follow my commandments. Sister Nadine. Really saying, sorry, you have to put it in your heart and to be truthful with mm -hmm. it. I mean, you just got to break it down. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm truthful. Yeah. Because you can't apologize to a person and say, well, if I do something. Mm -hmm. That's what they play. You yeah. have to apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jesus. Say it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's what that's why he did. And you know what? And that's why the Bible said, "Go one on one with him." Because what I say to you in the closet over here, or down the hall, or in your car, me and you, we talking. You know, I said so and so. Yeah, yeah you did. I was wrong. Yeah. Now, guess what? Nobody knows about it but you, that person, Jesus Christ. Unless one of y'all tell it. <laughs> so that's why Jesus Christ said, "Go one on one with him, work that thing out," and nobody knows about it. I said, man, I was wrong. I sure did. I said that. Yeah, you did. And then admit your wrong. You see what I'm saying? Then I can accept you down. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. You got a little loud with me, Terry. You, 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 can't, you said that word. You know, you know what word you used there? Yeah, I did. I was in a heated argument, but I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And now nobody knows about it. Like, man, they, why they, they hugging and getting along real good over there. You don't know what's going on, but you know that love, love doesn't take over. They done worked that thing out. And that's what Jesus Christ was trying to get them to see. He said, For, just, just keep my commandments, please. And you're going to be okay. But you know, Brother Terry, uh, to humble yourself, it don't make you weak. It don't. It makes you strong. It does. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The most t teachable person is a humble person. And you can tell them right away. You can tell a person who knows everything. And a person who wants to know. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. And the more you study God's word, the Bible, you realize how much you don't know. <laughs> I don't care how many books you got, 
what you got at your house, what you study, how many books you got. Man, the more I study, the more I don't know. And, and, and every Sunday when there's a, there's a new, new theme coming up for our lesson, I have to study. I don't take no lesson for granted. I'm going to go up here and try just talk it at the top of my head. I'm telling you, when I start opening up the book, I realize something from the first paragraph that I didn't know. Or I heard, or I talked to somebody and said, man, did you know so-and-so was in that scripture? Then read that scripture a hundred times. And man, it's been there all along, just not, just not singing it. That's why God's, God's word, the Bible, it, it's, it'll show you something different every time you read it. Every account, there's something different in it. And that's why studying God's Bible is not going to get old. It's never going to get old because there's always something in there you and I can be blessed with. All right, let's keep on going. He said, the ruler has no uh, hold on me. He has nothing with me. He said, arise, let us go from here. Now, here we are at a point now where Jesus and his disciples, they have gotten up, they're heading their way to the Garden of Gethsemane, and the hour was about to come. Now, Jesus Christ knows that he's about to be betrayed. And when, when you think about a relationship with somebody that you had, and the closest they were to Jesus Christ, and, and he knowing he's about to die uh, and, 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 and in the most terrible way. The way Jesus Christ died was, was, uh, it was the, the crucifixion, it was horrible. It was a horrible way to die. And that's what, they, that's what they, if you notice, they had the two thieves up there. The reason why they had them up there, that's how they killed them individuals who were murderers and thieves. So they treated Jesus Christ like a murderer and a thief. They didn't even give him a good proper burial because, he, get this, he didn't do no wrong. He didn't have Johnny Cochran or Ben Crump to fight for him. He died, was accused, wrongly accused, was sentenced, and nobody else fought for his case. We talk about people been in prison for years and eventually get out because they got organizations to help them. Nobody fought for Jesus Christ's case. He died with a charge on him from the world that he, and he was innocent. He didn't have no jury. He didn't have no judge to help him. He was found guilty and sentenced to death. That's why Jesus Christ said, he's just letting each one of us know we're gonna be treated bad, we're gonna be talked about, but he's leaving words of comfort, words of peace for each one of us. Because at that, that time, we might not get exactly what Jesus Christ did, man, because he went through some cruel times. But he's trying to let each one of you know your time is coming, though. Sister Nadine. Ms. Louise said a precious promise from God. I'll never leave you That's it. Yes, that's it. <laughs> yes, that's it. Jesus Christ, he's, he, like he said, even though you, we can't see him and touch him like the disciples did, he just won't let you know. I'm, I'm here with you, though. The trial you're going through, you're not there going through it by yourself. And when you come on the other side, I want you to think about what you, go, what you went through. Next time you uh, have to go through something, you come out on the other side, think about that process. I mean, man, there was a time you saying in yourself, man, I wanted to give up. The pain was too severe. M my friends left me. My job was gone. I mean, that's a good time to say, and, and the devil's out. That's a good time to say, hey, I give up. I can't do this. But you made it on the other side. That that's the time to write yourself on a personal note that, that Jesus said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And those are comforting words. And those are spiritual words because he did leave physically, but he's always with us spiritually. And that comfort is, is here for each and one of us as we study God's word, the Bible, as it brings it back to our remembrance of what we learn, we can't think of nothing but, but the goodness of Jesus Christ, what he's done. And, I, and, I not, and I'm sure you as well appreciate the Holy Spirit, appreciate that he has sent something else to help each one of us. When, we, when we're down, we got scriptures here bringing to our mind of how he's gonna lift us up. When we're going through some of the trials and tribulations, he said it's only for a short time. So all of them scriptures comes, comes to light and when you're going through something. Because you might not can make a phone call every time 
for somebody to help you at three o'clock in the morning. But those scriptures that Holy Spirit serves as a comforter, it serves as a guidance to lift each one of us up. And that's why as God's people, we consider it an honor and a privilege to be uh, companions, uh, individuals who are followers of Jesus Christ. That we have something that, that we actually can't see it. But Jesus Christ says it's there. The Holy Spirit is there. And it's going to help you each and every way down that road. It's going to give you that comforting word. He says, he has nothing in me. Jesus could confidently and truthfully say that Satan had absolutely no hook, no foothold, no toehold of deception that can deter him. Satan could not push Jesus to the cross. Jesus went to it in a loving obedience to the God the Father out of the love for the world. He said that the world may know that I love the Father and as the Father gave me commandment, so do I. So Jesus Christ said, I did all this because I love every one of y'all. He said, he had nothing to do with the devil. He said, I know the devil had all those had Pharisees and uh, uh, false prophets and Judas is carried, all them people who got him killed. He said, but it, it really wasn't y'all. He said, I chose this line. Of work. I chose to die for them. So you didn't push me. I'm just doing being obedient to my father. It's to give my life for all these people. Because so what Satan, Satan thought was uh, to hurt us, he really helped us. <laughs> By killing Jesus Christ, every one of us now got the opportunity to live forever. So that scripture is good. All that comment they use, that what the devil meant for my fall, God made it for my good. He, him pushing Jesus, uh, not pushing Jesus Christ, but setting up this situation that Jesus Christ was killed, man, benefited every one of us. Every one of us benefited from it. And that's why when we come to him and say, Lord, I, I give myself to you, man, he immediately snatches you. You, you, you man, you man. And then he wants you to understand when he, when, he, when he brings you into the fold, the problem starts. But he says, I'm still there with you. That's what we come in to lift, uplift each one of us as they come in. And, and as Sister Dady mentioned earlier, everybody's on a different plane. When they come in, they come in as babes. That's why the Bible says there's milk and then there's solid food. Milk is what you give some individual when they first come in God's house. And, they, and, and, and they're excited. They're excited. Jesus Christ is accepting. We're all excited for them. But, but we also know one thing, that those who have been saved by Jesus Christ, we know that your problem's finna start now. And we got to be there for them. We got to shed that light to them, say, hey, look, your trouble's about to start now. But we are here for you. And that's what Jesus, that's what that helper did. The helper said, your trouble's finna start now. Jesus said, when I leave, I'm going to leave the helper with you. Because you're going to need him. You're going to need him. And they, and, and, and they were killed, they were martyred. Uh, many of them were persecuted, uh, the disciples, you know. Uh, so they needed that Holy Spirit because their best friend no longer is there visibly that they could see and touch and eat dinner with. So they needed something extra to carry us. And that's what we got, that little extra to carry us through. Where, where we go? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, babes, yes, exactly. Exactly. Ex a good point. You could be old in age, but if you just accepted Jesus Christ, now I need to treat them just like newcomers into Christ. We got to be, I got to deal with them. Because every sheep, I want you to understand something. Every sheep is different. And they're and, and they at a different place with Jesus Christ. So the new ones that come in, we got we to gotta be the ones that come around them and when they're going through something. Because they, they, their role is going to get rocked now. And they don't know how to deal with that. So now the responsibility comes upon us. Well, sister, this is, this is what Jesus Christ says is going to happen. But you know, I'm here for you. I'm here to pray with you. I'm here to be there to uplift you when you're going through that. That situation, because you you, I want you to understand, when they're coming into God's house, 
some of the stuff that they came from, it's still pulling on them. Now they really want them back. And then, you know, the, uh, uh, the weed man, that you was my best buyer. I need you back. And, and that temptation is pulling them. But that's why we come in, to lift them up. Say, I know, you, I know the struggles you're going through. Just stay on this road right here. Because we're not going to leave you. We're going to be right there with you. Because if you're suffering, then I'm suffering. If you're going through something, I'm going through something. We all got to have that type of mentality that if one brother's down, when we all down. And when one is uplifted, we need to rejoice with him. We, and that's how you be on one accord, because I'm happy for you. You got, you got promoted, man, I'm with you. If God lifted you up in some, in some way, I'm happy for you. But also when you're down, I want you to know I'm there for you. That's keeping his commandments. That's doing what he asked you to do when he left. So that's, so that's, that's the commandment God, Jesus Christ has given each one of us, it's 1030. That's the commandment Jesus Christ has given to each one of us. And one, as the, whether well, chapters 15 to 17 were spoken in route to Gethsemane, or whether Jesus Christ was lingering in saying this, he letting them know that once I'm gone, I'm, I might not be here physically, but I'm with each one of you spiritually. And, and I want you all to have that same mental thought. When you leave here, we're all together now, but when you leave here and you're going down that road or you're going on that job and where you know that supervisor's getting on your nerve, you know they, they plotting to get you. No, Jesus Christ said, now you don't have to be in this type of setting right here for me to be with you. Jesus Christ could make his, he could make his appointment with you right there at your desk, at your job. Right there as you walking down the hallway. Right there as you in that bathroom crying because there's no good supervisor. Wherever you are, Jesus Christ said, I'm right there with you. I'm going to be right there, right there with you. So that's what we want to get from this. That no matter what situation you are, no matter how dark it may look, don't give up because Jesus Christ is not going to give up on you. Don't give up on him. All right? All right, let me, that's the next week though. Hold on, let me put it in my book. All right, go for it. Hold on, let me put, I'm typing here. Okay, I type a little slow. You see, I do too, I'm, I'm a picker. All right, all right. So your question is, how do we, how do we use the Holy Spirit's power? How do we use? No, I'm, I'm writing your question down. We're gonna cover it next week, but I'm writing it down. How do we use the, the power of the Holy Spirit. I got you. All right. I don't know what the lesson is next week, but we'll 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 tune that in there. Oh, Bruce, y'all working me, man. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. I'm just joking, man. Go ahead, Bruce. Oh, is the Holy Spirit does this pick and choose? Okay, hold on. All right, hold on. I got you, Bruce. I, I, I know what you said. Okay. 
Now see, yeah, good, good point. That's good, Bruce, and I, I got it down. And I'm going to cover it, Bruce. I don't know what the lesson is next Sunday. I already know what the, we're, but we're going to fit this in. We're going to fit. So, we're in Book of Revelation. All right, but we still going to get this in, okay? The, we, we're going to get these in. Okay, all right, I got you, Bruce. I got you. And see, those are the type of questions that he's asking. These are salvation questions. These are not just, you know, because we need to know this. Because uh, by having the right answer to these questions, uh, determine how you worship or serve God. Because one question was but the power of the Holy Spirit. Bruce asked, do you have to be obedient to his word? Man, those are salvation questions. Those are just not no random questions. So we're going to have to face it. And I'm looking at a way, and I know we have our books, our Sunday school books, but I see some questions that we have that we need to deal with but the, but the Sunday school lesson puts, puts us at a hamper because we, did, we have to cover it. But I'm looking at it because there's some questions that we mentioned in here that we need to actually attack. Because, and not attack, but we need to discuss because these are questions that we want to know. And, and I don't really believe that we should put them off and say, give you a 10 minute answer. I really need, believe we need to look into this, these questions and these answers. And so, uh, next week we're gonna get, go ahead, sister. Ma'am. That's the first thing. You got to love first for the Holy Spirit to even dwell in. That's one of the spirits. Yes, ma'am. You sure you gotta have love. Holy Spirit's not gonna dwell in us. That's what God said. Love him. That's it. Love our neighbor. That's it. So you ain't got that, then the Holy Spirit's not gonna dwell in us. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's a good point, though. You're right. You got you to have love. All right. We're going to cover this next week. And I, I think about that, though, because we've got some real good questions that we answer. And I need to try to figure out somehow we could attack these questions or deal with these questions in uh, a longer time than what I'm going to uh, be able to do next week with our lesson. And because you know, I know our lessons already lined out for us. But this right here, we can't we can't we just can't skip it. We're going to have to deal with it. You know, and we're going to have to answer. So I got them down. I got them in my book and I'm going to send them out in the group text. The questions she asked and I'm going to put them on Facebook uh, today so that we'll remember the questions that was asked and we're going to cover them next week. That all right. All right. Then. Well, thank you, everyone, for it. It's, it's 1037. And uh, uh, and for those who helped us here on uh, Facebook Live and showed up, we appreciate everybody's time and attention. We'll now get ready. For